G'day guys, it's Jar here and welcome back to Seduce Me the Otome. So you guys seem to be loving this a lot, so we're going to keep on going. The two boys led me back to the dining room, where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Breakfast smells good. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. Thank you. I nod before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drew us back to the dream I had. That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instantly, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I feel a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thought. Morning. Huh? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raises an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barks hey, towards the kitchen where James was working. Yet. I'm starving! There's no need to yell, Sam! You're yelling too! <laughs> Don't argue with me! Oh my god children. From behind me, Eric appears and sat beside me, rubbing his temple in obvious annoyance. Early in the morning. It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? What do you mean, castle? For some reason, when I hear the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys have a castle? Sam looks at me and smirks at my reaction. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. And wouldn't it be logical to not yell? Whatever. Uh, what? Soon James and Damien appear hands full of plates that carry bacon, eggs, toast and waffles. They place the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. Still, thank you. All of a sudden my phone begins to ring, ushering me to pull it from my pocket and answer. Hello? Good morning. Guess who's at your door right now? Right on cue, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stops. Susan and Naomi are here. My heart quickly begins to pound on my chest. Matthew was on the lo was in the lobby, and he gets the door first. Instantly, jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through the archway between the dining room and lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door knuckle, causing the world to go in slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his ears, Matthews opened the door and revealed the surprise faces of Naomi and Susu. The world around me stops and Susu and Naomi keep their eyes on Matthew, who merely stares back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh, I could not believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? What's going Suzu, on? Suzu, let me explain. Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. Soon the other incubators appear in the lobby with us. The situation is not getting pretty. I had to think fast. They're in your head, they're my brothers or visitors. They're then visitors. Why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, what? Okay, whatever. Back. Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smiling at me before stepping in front of me. We know the situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. Cool. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed so surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room alone, along with Susie and Naomi, and sat across from their confused gaze. As Naomi and Susie sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising Whoa, their guests. This looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meal. I could just say that the help. Make sure you dig in. I love Matthew, he's so cute. 
A look at Naomi and Suzu as they begin to eat, visually enjoying every bite they place in their mouth. Hopefully the food will ease their mind for whatever James wants to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. Well, you see, uh, Jelly James places a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I begin to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. It's such a huge house. See, why couldn't I just say that? For a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uh. uniforms or whatever? Well, allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like it's easier I'm if they're sorry, comfortable, though. Be better servants. Earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. Yeah, definitely. So, if I may ask. What brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see Eric, what he's doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Hell Cafe. Yeah. There's an arcade? Okay. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? Yeah, well, exactly. For some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents are That's right. A housewarming party to be held here soon. I forgot. And by oh, saying so they mean I tonight. Can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is Yeah. No need. No, it's not. Let's leave, please. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Really? Sam, not now. Oh god, well I... I want to help out, but at the same time, I want to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Are you sure? I'll go out with Susie, you know me. I'm sure, I trust these guys to be able to work everything out. We'll have everything done Don't stop it up. You home. All right, we'll Thank you. Here while you go get your things. I was strangely re relieved to know that everything was going to be okay while I was gone from the house. I trusted the guys enough to do everything they could for the house party, so my mind focused itself on hanging out with my friends. Eventually I was out the door, walking towards Naomi's car with Naomi and Suzu. Suzu grabbed the entire back seat as I took the passenger side. Naomi started the car and drove off towards the city. It was nice driving out with my friends. After all that's happened, it was good just to go out and forget my troubles. That's true. Yeah, that was a good meal, though. Suzu. Peppers when you're bored. Everything you eat always needs more flavor. Oh my god. Um, I still can't get over that, Suzu. You need to teach me. I still can't get over that. You don't know how it feels. Anyways, after the mall, what do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> could go to the Pink Lady Cafe and chill out with Kay. I'm sure she'd love the company. But we have to stop Who's by Kay? the arcade. They have this new game out called Orion. You get to control this guy named Isabi, Orion? and you're part of the rebel forces, and you get to shoot things, and there's robots, and... Sheesh, we get it! That sounds pretty cool. We get it! We'll go to the arcade. <laughs> okay. Which one first, though? You know how popular Kay is. She'll be spawned with customers later in the day. She had better options during the last hour of the cafe. So basically, after the arcade... You figured me out so quickly, Patterson. What did I tell you about Hell yeah. using my last name? Well, let's just go to the arcade. Whoa. This is so cool. I want to go to an arcade. I don't think we have one in Adelaide. To be honest, I really don't think we have an arcade. If we do, I really need to hit it up. That was not a sentence I ever want to say again. But like, if we do have an arcade, I definitely want to go to it because arcades are cool and just awesome and I want to go to one. So we head to the mall and walk around for a good amount of time before driving out to the Moonfall Arcade. As weird as the name sounds, the arcade was one of the best arcades in the city. 
Kids and teenagers lie in the games watching their players as the console at the consoles as they anxiously wait to have their turn. Susie grabs Naomi and me by the hand before dragging us to a section of the arcade where a bunch of kids are gathered in awe and excitement. In the middle of the crowd was a large game with two joyst joysticks platforms and a screen that flashed named Orin every other second. In the background of the screen, a holographic playfield glimmered before us, revealing a neon futuristic battlefield and an enemy robot charging yes, right at the camera. Yeah, me, be a bit happier. Right. It looks really cool. Alright, go for it. Susie smirks and looks at me, hoping that I would join her as I usually did for partner games. I look at Naomi, who merely rolls her eyes, crossed her arms, and gave me the okay nod. I grin before knowing to Suzu who she is enjoy. Right, Hell yeah. I look, it took us half a good half an hour before we were able to step up to the platformers. The point of the game was to beat the government and restore freedom to the general public. We played as rebels and robots, and the game quickly became a smash and bash game version of multiplayer enemy rock. Robots. Ugh. Playing with Susie was always an adventure. We both knew what our strengths and weaknesses were, so it was easy to collaborate with each other. It wasn't long before we got into the swing of the game and we were beating enemies like crazy. By the time we got to the boss, we were unstoppable. It was so refreshing to beat the boss and put out three letter code name into the high school list. Hell yeah! Susie gave me a large smile, which made me smile back. I was happy to be able to hang out with my friends like this. I felt free from worries and responsibilities. It was something I loved. We eventually lost track of time and wound up staying longer than we expected, making us unable to stop at the cafe before going home to dress for the housewarming party. So we drove back, Nomi and Susie pick up clothes from and other necessities from their house before driving back to the mansion. The hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party. Knowing my dad, he has invited his business partners and the executives of the Anderson, Compa Anderson Company to show me off. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at the form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectation. It was really a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. It was my test to see if I really could live on my own. Well, not truly alone. I have the incubator to thank, but even so, I didn't have my dad guiding me or my mum helping me through living alone. I knocked my door, burned my thoughts, and surprised me. Who was it? Well, I'm ready, but... Alright. Everyone looks so pretty. I like the dress that I'm wearing. It's very nice. As soon as I opened the door to the hallway, I watched Naomi and Susie's faces turn from smiles to complete awestruck stares. Dude, you look what? Hot. Yeah, you look amazing. Where did you get that dress? Thank you. I've had it for a while, I've just never had the chance to wear it. I figure I might as well bring it out now. Oh, the boys look so hot. Oh, damn, the boys look good. They look like actual servants too. Very nice. Matthew just I can't Matthew's just so cute. He's so like young and I'm just like My angel, I shall protect you. Oh my god. I step out of my room and close my bedroom door behind me. As I walk down the hall to the grand lobby, Ink I stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed to the nine to the nines as proper servants. Apparently. Yeah. I was slightly taken aback on how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman, even Sam. I slowly began to climb down the steps with Susie and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time, like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly blush, but I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down the final step, smiling. So... Thank you. Um, as ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it seemed, and I had done all that I could to prepare for it. Now, it was up to fate. The other boys smiled, assuring at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. It was right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. 
Sam and Eric quickly rush to the door and open the double doors wide to reveal my parents both dressed in their best. Oh, Mum. Mum looks so beautiful. Oh, hey, Mum and Dad. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. It was probably overlooked. Because yeah. Who would deny good service? I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question the boys. They didn't ask for verification or anything. I looked at the boys and noticed Sam and Eric staring at telling my parents, were they using their powers on them? They had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. It is belonging to the house. My mother quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. It had only been a couple of days, but living away from the ones who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. I look at my dad who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground waiting for him to look at me. When he did, he let a small smile grace his lips. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me? On his own accord, my mother was grinning ear to ear at his words. I was beyond speechless. Thank you, Daddy. However, his cold face quickly returned as he began to look around once again. What do you mean? Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. To become CEO. My potential? I knew it. Something was off about tonight, and now this party has become much more than I anticipated. I gulped slightly, but I nod in response. I look to the incubators, but they were continuing to be servants, my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Naomi and Susie raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I let out a small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As if times moved forward, all of a sudden the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and exclusive executive members, putting on professional faces my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hid it well behind a small smile and a handshake. Many even asked me questions. I tried my best to remember as maturely as possible. I, I had to. I tried to apply as maturely as possible. I had to remember. Say what they want to hear, not what you want to say. Uh, it's okay. I guess. Well, um, it's still being independent. No, I'm doing my best. I could. Uh, it's pretty good actually. I think I'm doing my best. But, yeah, it really did. Um. You Thank you for your condolences. I mostly live in the present, so there's not much of a concern. This policy is kind of up in the air. We'll see. Do I? Yes, I do. Um, do you have college plans? I'm trying to think. Yes, I do. I feel like the question came one after another. It was tough to answer some of them. Some because they weren't about me. They were about the company. Um, don't ask me, that depends on who runs, I don't really care, it's hard to say, so, so, so. The it'll get back, contract soon. Eh. Um, it's a policy that reflects my own values, so I, I personally think it's great. If it up to me, I would be more concerned about making profits. Um, uh, it, it's a possibility. Eventually the question stopped and I was back to being myself. Naomi and Zuzu were mingling in the crowd and the incubators were doing their job, so I was alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about it, at least I wasn't being questioned left, right and centre anymore. Suddenly though, my mum pushes her way through the Hi, crowd to me, I bringing along someone I didn't know. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. With my mother stood a man who looked only a couple years older than me. He smiled and held his hand out to me, Hi. silently asking for my hand. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Um, place your hand in his. As I place my hand in his, <coughs> I cough. He raises his lips and kisses over my knuckles. I feel my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew smiles at me before releasing my hand. My mother smiles at both of us, which makes me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? Um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. You're welcome. Thank Price you. Very much deserved. Andrew then chuckles nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his Something laugh properly before smiling forward. at me. <laughs> I've just been ex 
excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. He used to talk huh? about Why? the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> oh wow, I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination about me and their rather personal questions. I looked at Andrew, who has a kind face to me. Something about him seems off and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. I felt someone walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold s s stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was a fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break it at any wrong word. I stared at Andrew. This guy wanted to take my grandfather's position at CEO. I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. Just leave him, Dad. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. Dad. Quickly, Andrew retreats away from my family into the crowd of people. Follow him. I quickly felt Andrew wanting to be sure he was right. I felt a little embarrassed that my dad put him on the spot like that. I had to apologize. He winded up on side. The stars practically dancing in the grass as we stood in the backyard of the mansion. It had been the first time in years being out there, but most of my thoughts weren't on the soldier. Hey, Andrew? Andrew turned to me in surprise. However, his face was completely red in both embarrassment and humiliation. Oh, I, um, I felt terrible. I didn't see you or hear you following. Sorry. No, it's, it's fine. I should be the one apologizing. I mean, for the way my dad behaved, he shouldn't have been so... I should have expected it and been more prepared. <laughs> Andrew rubbed the back of his neck and gave a goofy grin. It was intuitive seeing Andrew's professional side and then seeing a goofy smile away from everyone else. It's not a problem, Still, I'm sorry for that. But thank you. We both smiled at each other before I reached my hand out to him. He tilted his head and raised his eyebrow in confusion. Jara. My name is Jara. In understanding his smile, we returned before he took my hand gently and shook it. Nah, it's not that nice. It's much better than Andrew. I mean, who names their kid Andrew? But how about a lot of people do? Something cool like that. I like Andrew better. I couldn't help but laugh at him. He was pretty chill for a guy who was supposed to be the vice chairman's son. He grinned and laughed along with me. I don't know why, but I felt warm. Since it was almost non-existent breeze or the situation we found ourselves, it felt nice. Lewis. And just like that, the feelings have vanished. We both turned to see my dad at the door of the mansion staring at Andrew with almost a deadly glare. Andrew straightened up, trying to maintain a business posture. Your limo is in the front. The driver has requested that you return home now. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Andrew quickly nods to me before sp speeding back into the mansion to leave. As I took a step to follow, my dad steps in front of me. Don't want to hear dad? Him. Do not become friendly with him. He wants to take the company away from us. You have no reason to be friends with him. And you have no reason to control my life. Before I could retort, my dad turned and walked away back inside, worrying about how the party was nearing an end. I sighed and entered the house as well, waiting for the party to end immediately. Eventually, only Susie, Naomi, my parents, and the incubators were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stare up at him, a wave of confusion washes over my face. What? I'm proud. Uh, oh, well, thank you, Dad. Be a good CEO. All right. Oh, I'll right. I'm sure Naomi and Susie need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Oh, uh, right. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? All right. Okay. See you. Come visit us soon. We'll do, Mum. We'll do. All four of my remaining guests left the building, all but my dad waving back to me. With the last guest gone, I sighed and sat on the staircase, exhausted. Phew. That was tiring. Give her a 
a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself. The it was hard. As expected, princess. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? <laughs> we can clean up. <sighs> no, I want to help. Let me help. Are you guys sure? It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. I felt a hot shadow run down my spine. The voice of my dream echoed through the air into my ears. I look around panicked, all inside the incubators. James places a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shoot our heads towards the door, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swing open, revealing a sight I would have never expected to see. A skin skin red as blood, eyes black and gold piercing into mine, roughening up clothes and a pistol in hand. I saw a monster. I covered my mouth not to scream at the sight. Dry blood covered the bandana around his neck. As he smirked at me, the boy around and the boys around me. Beside the red skinned man was a smirking a similar looking woman in matching thug like clothes. Oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I would find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of All of a sudden the man raises his gun at Sam's face and as he pulls the trigger. Sam We all gasped in the shot, instantly expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, what but the fuck? Wh what? what? What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank slot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggression. Lucky for my ears, we came quiet after its first shot. This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed what? to mean? The man growled and threw his gun at Sam. He was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground. A couple of times were sliding further away, hitting the wall in its final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flames that disappeared into the air. What? Malix, that was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place is protected by magic. It your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it. It only disables hellborn magic. Max's great face grew to extreme anger. His fist tightened as he was crushing a stress ball. I'm dragging your asses out and shooting you then. At pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malik and the boys. With no power, Malik wasn't going to fight. I took the chance to stand up to him instead of being a powerless like I was in my dream. Get out of my house. Malik scowled at me, walking right up to me, leaning close to my face. I glared back, Since my courage skyrocketing. You really don't think, do you? If you kill me, you'll be hunted down more than just the police. What? <laughs> All of a sudden, I felt a hand grip my hand, pull it back, forcing me to cry out and stare up at Malik. His eyes bored into hey, mine and cackled his face. Sam, Eric. Within mere seconds, Sam has punched Malik square in the jaw, forcing him to let my hair go. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malik back into the group. Come on, Sam. You and me. Right here. Let's go. Come on, asswipe. Don't. However, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and places a firm grip on Malik's shoulder. What? Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Mm. Not now. Not now. I said at the girls. I said as the girl spoke down at Malik. She looked the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malik or for me. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. We shoot everyone. True. Think. If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted. It'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come. Try to exercise us. Exactly. So bye. The two growled at each other. They could have used their magic. I could sense the fire was going from underneath their teeth. Max grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you 
up real good. <laughs> uh huh. The mug turned to me and moved his fingers to point directly between my eyes. Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> With that, Malik and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I once alone. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys whoa, to quickly whoa, turn to catch me. Right. Yeah, why was he here? Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. We should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. Matthew. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malik's left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in Fury's words. Alex, was he a, a demon? He's a devil. A, a devil? There's a difference. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Planes. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans live. It's hell. Despite us not being human, what do you guys know it as? Creatures. We actually have brains for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or kill others for their own enjoyment. Demons like us know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher Got you. Order, and that power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free will. Okay. Don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. Okay. This was also confusing. Demons and devils and magic all exist and I happen to land in the middle of it. What do we do? What? Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw it. Okay. That nature. We can sense its aura around your body. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises, and this one took the cake. It's been the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <laughs> Kick his ass right now. Oh my god. Then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Alex okay. We'll be here for you. Thank you. But what like about going outside, weren't he? Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like but he will on you, boys. Back against. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malix. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and appreciative about the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malik did the same? Even more so, I was so lost about how my grandfather knew about magic, I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words of the Incubi, I felt like a target to something I had never been explained or approved. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this all ha even happen? Should I really meddle with the situation? They're only staying until they defeat Malik. That's right. They said they'll only stay until they defeat Malik. After that, my life can go back to normal. Temporarily insane, as Kay would say. The question was then, would I want them to leave? If my life went back to normal, then I'd have to take care of the house all of my own. I'd get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by boys. I'd have to. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide my responsibilities. Enough. Let's just sleep and deal with it when it comes in the morning. Defending my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me, hoping whatever for the future, whatever the future had for me, I, I would be ready for it. Be by your side. I'll I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. Matthew? I love you. I saw my eyes, letting the voices of my dreams echo in my head and force myself away. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m.? Why am I up so early? I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to get back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips and threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at 7 in the morning? Um, work on homework. And with that, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. That was... 
a roller coaster. So we had the party. The boys looked very nice. And a devil came to our house. So I guess more is going on than I expected. Anyway, Jack says in the next video, sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. See ya. Hmm, this game is so weird in multiple ways. Yes.